One day, while looking at all of these iceberg memes, I've thought to myself, why not and make a Mario Forever iceberg as well? Hello everyone, this is Looper, and I'm going to present you our first ever Mario Forever iceberg that was created by me and Team Cloud Engine. Now I want to give a special thanks to Christ1919 and Gene Savare for the precious precious information they have provided us. It turned out Mario Forever hides much more interesting and darker secrets than we have thought. So let's start. For those who don't know, the iceberg meme or the iceberg concept is taking a one community and gathering all the facts possible. The deeper you go, the more obscure and mysterious the facts get. And without a further ado, let's start with the iceberg. Welcome to tier 1, obvious facts. These facts are known by everyone literally, and you will find about them immediately once you start playing Mario Forever for the first time. It is really obvious for everyone, but back when the Mario Forever forum was in its heyday, Softendo personally showed up and announced that they were Michal Danietz, the official creator of Mario Forever and founder of Buzil Games. Mario Forever Remake is a remake of the original Mario Forever with fixed bugs and more content. This project is run by Mario Variable 3410, who goes by the name of the Mario Variable as of 2021. Speaking of the Mario Variable, this guy was a revolutionizer behind the MF fan game scene. He was the first person to combine Mario work with Multimedia Fusion and was the creator of the Letter Words series. The creator of Minus Worlds, which became popular after DGV's playthrough, considered as the best MF fan game ever. Phantom Sapphire is the creator of many MF fan games which are regarded as the successors to Letter Wars series and Minus Worlds by many. In my opinion, an MF creator with the most creative design ideas ever. I think this goes without saying, but obviously all content created outside of the original plot of Mario Forever are presumed to be fan-made or non-canonical. Clicktime Fusion 2.5, originally named as Multimedia Fusion 2, is one of the game-making softwares used by Mario Forever creators to make Mario Forever fan games. Rainbow Engine mod, also known as REM, is an update to Lex Rainbow Engine prepared by Antimac, or before known as the Machinums, for CTF 2.5. The engine was slowly updated with elements introduced in other MF fan games as well as the original elements invented by the Machinums. The engine is well known for the feature of item stock. World 9 is the first ever MF fan game released, made by Sisk Chillon back when Mario Forever wasn't even popular at all. World 9 was the first world to be featured in Mario Forever 6.0 as a fan world. It went through various changes in design and difficulty made by Subtendo himself. The world is unplayable and buggy. If you finish a level, you'll be stuck forever due to a soft lock, and people discovered different ways to access levels from World 9 over time. Mario Forever Toolbar, or Game Bar, call it in any way you want, is bundled with the original MF 6.0 installer and other versions as well. This toolbar is commonly thought to be shareware. Welcome to Tier 2, commonly circulated stories or knowledge. These facts are also known by most of the MF people, although although newcomers won't get it immediately. Minus Worlds 2.0 cancelled. This is the first ever popular Mario Forever meme, at least to my knowledge, that was created after a certain Russian MF playthrough creator spammed Christ's videos with the statement Minus World 2.0 cancelled. Slava Kochka, or otherwise known as Snaba Koka, is a Russian Mario Forever playthrough creator who was accused of plagiarism countless times and is now considered as a meme. Mario Worker has two different versions, one resembling the Mother Day Mario Worker remake and an original one, albeit its reception was quite terrible. There is also a, another version of Mario Worker which was made in Game Maker and was badly received as well. Hardcore World 1-4 and the whole lost map are all based off World 7 from Mario Forever, but with changes. Fun fact, the level 2 and the level 4 in the Lost Map are the same levels but with different layouts. Siskchulan is the creator behind World 9, created after Mario Variable's discovery about combining Mario Worker with Multimedia Fusion. He was also the author behind World 10. 
At the end of the credits of Mario Forever, there are people mentioned as beta testers, although their identity is unknown. World 10, which was Sistion's last creation, was very popular at the time, and at some point the source MFA file was shared around the internet, which resulted in many fan games by unknown creators. All of those creations were nothing but slightly changed levels of World 10, although there were some that became popular over time. These ones were World of Void and Hardcore World 3. The Lost Map 2 was the first release game by Mario Worker on April 2nd, 2015. The game featured 5 levels, one of which was Old 9-9-1 made by Christ. Graphically, this game fits into MF 6.0 style with a lot of non-16-bit decorations. The original version is much harder than the one in Mario Forever Remake. It's because level 4 includes an outside section which is very hard, and the Giga Bowser boss has a lot of random movements. The Lost Map 2 appeared in Mario Forever Remake when the version 3.7 was released. In this version, the difficulty was toned down and the level 4 was completely revamped. Mario Forever Revolution is a project created by Mario Variable as a completely revisited version of Mario Forever. As of now, only some videos of concept showcases are available as well as a demo version. Welcome to Tier 3, Uncommon Knowledge. We're getting there. Most of these facts may not be known by everyone, so let's dive in. Most of the songs used in Mario Forever came from the demo scene. Artists include Nuke, Dave the Brave, Format, Virgil, and others. It is believed that either Softendo was a demo scene member or a huge fan, although the proofs of him being a demo scene member are lacking. The first Mario Forever Remake server was created back in 2017. However, that server has been archived since 2020 to make a way for a brand new one that year. At some point between 2019 and 2020, comments started to appear on both Second Junes and Christ's videos on YouTube. All of them featured the words along the lines, RIP or he has died. No one knows why was this done, basically. You might not know this, but Mario Variable's letter words series weren't originally supposed to cover all letters until Jin Savari inspired Mario Variable to continue and make possibly the most popular Mario Forever fan series ever. Thank you, Jin Savari. The Sylvester Stallone Zone was a new added section on Mario Forever 6.0's save screen, which was supposed to have a collection of very hard levels. The only available world was World of Stupidity, and the Frustration World, which was under construction, has never been released since then. This event is linked with the decompilation of FNAF games in 2018. After Five Nights at Freddy was decompiled with a special ex exclusive tool, which later was released as Anaconda, I think, people used it to decompile Mario Forever 6.0. This event was linked with other dramas in the community, which I will later cover up. On Hunting or Night Fury was an MF fan game creator back in 2015. His first ever world was World V, which was remade several times, and Hardcore World 3. His works were not the best quality, but because of the innovative era of MF fan games, was considered as good. His whereabouts are since then unknown, and his channel has been since deleted also. Hardcore World 1-4 had different music until 4.0, the PGM with a fart remix of one of Yoshi's Island tracks. Take a listen. before even Hardcore Worlds were introduced, there was an unused music file, which along with the Castle 4 remix also featured Softendo talking gibberish. Here, have a listen. There has been some undiscovered hidden bonus blocks that were discovered only after the original Mario Forever was decompiled. Here they are. Human Laboratory in version 2.16 was first known as World Kri 02pl This is a Polish forum about games for which Softendo dedicated this world to. 
the first level featured a sign in which several forum members were listed, but their identity is unknown. This one is self-explanatory, but many Mario Forever creators have their own engine that they use to make their fan games. Banasaf was basically Subtendo's friend. Subtendo shared his MF engine with him so he could release his own games and play around. Their quality was doomed to be the worst the MF community has ever seen, although these games by Benesoft were decently popular. Things like dead green, cheap cheap hurting Mario or being able to repeatedly jump at the goal were actually bugs that evolved into features. The first ever version of World 9 was originally played level by level. It was after some time when the full world was released and then remade for Mario Forever Remake. The cutting room floor is a special wiki dedicated to document the unused, cut or unreleased things from various games. And this wiki also has an article about Mario Forever, covering unused assets in versions 5.0 and 6.0, which were discovered by decompiling them, as well as revisional differences between older as well as revisional differences between older and newer versions. I'd suggest you checking out the article yourself, the link will be in the description, but here are two of the most interesting discoveries within the source code so far. There is an inaccessible World 8 map screen which is played before the Hardcore World 1's levels in the source code frames list, possibly hinting towards the fact that the Hardcore Worlds were supposed to have a map at some point in development. This map screen was reduced to a solid white background in version 4 5.9. In version 7.02 and above, there is a copy of World 1-3 that has completely different level design, which according to Michal Danietz was supposed to be the one of the levels for Frustration World, but ended up being unfinished. It's technically accessible, since beating level 3 of World of Stupidity warps you straight to this level, but because there is a bug in the second level that causes a soft lock and prevents you from progressing, the third level also becomes inaccessible. Welcome to Tier 4. Fascinating yet unpopular tales. We're getting there. The original release of Mario Worker 1.0 had the file Mario Forever Edit v1.cca, which is the source file for the game. No one knows for sure why this happened, but those who know of it suggest that it was accidental. The Chinese community is like the alternative world of Mario Forever. Their projects tend to be very creative, but very little about them is known. However, this community is infamous for its stories regarding plagiarism and cheating. Classic Yoshi666 used to be known as Zeli, who has been known to be cheating in Mario Forever games and fan games alike. In the summer of 2020, I released a Chinese community commentary where a section was dedicated to criticize Zeli's actions, which led him to shut down his channel, although in 2021, he returned as Classic Yoshi666. Sinho Badarast was an MF player from Iran that was active in the old Mario Forever Remix server. His works also received recognition. These included Daydream Worlds, which are now unfinished. At some point, Cena was accused of plagiarism, which led him to organize a big raid on the old Mario Forever Remix server. This event led the staff team to lock the server down for a cleanup and improve the security. The second era of the Mario Forever Remix server has started since then. There are a number of people from the old Mario Forever Remake server that have been inactive since the new server has been created. These people include the Russian men SMWC, Savul Guga, and Sina Hopadarast. At some point before the official release, World R from Letter Wars series was leaked in the Chinese community. No one knows who did that and how did that happen. R Jizzle was an unknown MF creator who got popular in 2015 thanks to Daniel's Game Vault for his World R and later announced MF Z Deuce. His whereabouts are unknown since then and his projects are unfinished. There have been two moments of Christ's private engine leak documented. The most recent one happened when Christ uploaded a demo of his World Z and he accidentally left an MFA file of his engine. Human Lab 2 was, I think, Mario 2233's first ever fan game released on Radial's engine, which was badly received. 2233 later planned to create a remake named Human Lab X that wasn't popular in result. In 2018-2020, there was a problem regarding some people whose names I'm gonna keep private, stealing other creators' style and claiming them as their own. Although the problem is not still resolved yet, its scale is definitely not as big as in the past. Before Team LGD would release an All-Stars 3 trailer, it was decided that their collab would be called the Multiverse 2, but that changed once Christ mentioned about All-Stars 3, which was never made into a thing. 
based on the fact that the engine of Mario Forever Fanmade, a compilation of contest winner worlds held by the Mario Variable, is used in World Zero and World 4 Extra Fan Worlds in original Mario Forever 7.0. It could be possible that Subtendo decompiled it and inserted the level frames into the new MF version. But this theory was debunked later on by Christ, who said that he was the one who sent the levels himself. Welcome to Tier 5, Pre-Discord Stories. As the title implies, all of these stories, excluding only one of them, happened before the Discord server was ever created. So let's go. Games Mania, also known as Dimitro, was an MF fan behind the infamous Mario Forever 2015, who was at some point a member of the Chinese community. According to him, he was in a team with Anaman Mu and WSW, where they ported levels from Mario Worker to Rainbow Engine. Dimitro's QQ account has been lost since then. As a proof of his credibility, he still has WSW and Anaman Mu in his Skype friends list, but all of the messages has been wiped since then, for obvious reasons of course. So I think we can trust his story. When Christ hosted his first ever creator contest, one of his rules was a prohibition of custom engine usage. His video features a rainbow engine logo with a cross on it, a C which triggered Ari's creator Le. He later announced that they would stop making updates for the engine, but the situation died down quickly since then. I'm just gonna say this shortly, but this is the one of the biggest drama Mario Forever community ever had which has lasted a year, almost. I'm going to stay brief on this one and just say that this has been the biggest drama in the Mario Forever community yet. The arguing parties involves me, Christ, Phantom Sapphire, the Mario Variable, and my t old team LGD as well. Long story short, it wasn't a very pleasing experience, and I think... <laughs> if you want me to cover this drama in more detail, just leave the comment and I'll do it at some point. Sisk Chillin did not get involved in the making of World 11, World 12, and World 13 at all, even though these worlds were labeled as Sisk Chillin worlds. In reality, it was made by the team known as Team Sisk Chillin. The first ever maps for Minus Worlds were created by Ice Cold 555 on DeviantArt. Their content does not resemble the Minus Worlds we already know. Mario Forever 2014 and 2015 were two biggest projects in the early era of MF fan games. MF 2014 was well received, although looking back at it, it wasn't as good in quality as we thought. MF 2015 is undoubtedly considered as the worst MF fan game ever and has become a meme since then. The Lost Map 3 by Mario Worker was meant to be Night Underground themed. Christ involved in the project recalls having planned three levels, yet only had one level completely finished. Mario Variable, also involved in the project, wanted to introduce a night-themed forest level with the water puddles of sorts, though in the end the project was canned because it was thought to be boring and unfinished. Welcome to Tier 6. Here we've gathered the most obscure rumors and myths. It is known that Mario Forever 1.15 was the first ever public version, however, Mario Forever 1.15 is the only ever known public version. There could be other versions further back which haven't seen the light of day as of yet. Personally, I believe that all these old versions could have been just the beta test versions. Soik2 was one of the first players to post a full completion of the original World 9 by Zisk Chillin and a Starman running world record. Happily, one of the recognized people in this original Super Mario speedrunning scene also used to upload MF content, albeit it was all speedruns. Happily also made the cover art for Zisk Chillin's World 9. The whereabouts of Soik2 are unknown alongside his contribution to MF. Happily, however, is still active in the Super Mario Bros speedrunning scene, but his contributions to MF are since then unknown. Some people believe that World 9 by Sisk Chillin was not the first ever Mario Forever fan game and that there are more earlier games that were never released outside the Chinese community, however no proofs exist as of yet. It is rumored that Gene Savate and Rock has been writing up a creepypasta for Mario Forever, however said creepypasta has not seen the light of day yet. The story involved a Polish guy playing Mario Forever excessively in the early 2000s who became bored because he knew everything about MF until he stumbled upon a video about a new world in MF. So he asks for a download link for that version, which was corrupted. The new levels had bloodstains, a mutilated version of the human lab, and Bowser at the end of 1-1. 
This one is self-explanatory, but there are a number of MF fan projects made by popular creators that have been lost or never released. If you have such projects, you can share your story down in the comments. On October 8th, 2014, Christ published a video on his channel titled Mario Forever Minus Worlds Update 2, which showed a possible level from World Minus 9. However, the showcase level was later repurposed into Mario Workers Lost Map 2 as the third level. From that point, many speculations were made regarding the theme and the details surrounding this world. Some people believed it would be night-themed desert, and others had their theories as well. However, this whole case became even more mysterious after the release of World Minus 8, which showed the destructions of the Bowser's castle with Mario and Toad inside it, implying their demise. With this, it's hard to tell how the World Minus 9 will look like. This is my personal story from the childhood, but you might need to take it with a grain of salt. Back in 2016, I remember myself sitting in a Turkish forum that used to cover all sorts of games and talk about the game design. This is where I stumbled upon the post about Mario Forever, which had a download link with a version 1.12. The whereabouts of that version has been unknown since then, and I don't remember much from it anymore. You are being fooled. Softendo and Buziol are different persons whose mission is to brainwash players into making endless Mario Forever fan games, which will let them take over the whole Mario franchise. Human Laboratory is a vast kingdom that is an enemy to both Bowser and the Mushroom Kingdom. Mario Forever was in works since 1981 by Softendo's long dead brother. His concept was stolen by Nintendo and Softendo couldn't do anything but to revive his brother's legacy in 2001. At some point in 2004, Buziel Games released an update for MF version 1.16.45, which is said to have added a very special easter egg. A week later, Buziel Games removed the download page for that version for unknown reasons. It has been found out that recently it was taken down because of the sudden suicide of an 11-year-old Polish kid who had discovered the easter egg. Before the incident occurred, their parent have said that their child told them about a disturbing image that appeared with a terrifying scream in the game. That image had haunted the kids since then, until they committed suicide by jumping off of a roof. However, this is all a speculation, and the incident may not be related to the game at all. Research at your own discretion. Now, if you haven't understood already, all of the theories in the tier 7 are fake and obviously not true. And I hope you didn't get too scared. And so, this is the whole Mario Forever iceberg, covered in, I think, in less than 20 minutes. I'll be looking at that when I'll edit this. And so I want to thank you for watching, and I want to thank everyone involved into this project. And I'll see you later.